What's up, guys? It's 2022. I think that we need to make some predictions, right? Now, everybody likes to make predictions. I've got a couple of them. Two areas of the market that I think are going to do really well in 2022. And it's not just because I'm studying the tea leaves, okay? It's because we're going to be looking at some data. And for one of these groups, I'm going to be looking at history because history can teach us a lot about what to expect uh, in different market environments. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about high inflationary environments, what areas tend to do really well. So let's go ahead and get into it. And the first area that I'm going to be covering are the semiconductors. Now, semiconductors, just really quickly, these are just chips. They're high performance chips. They go into everything that we use on a daily basis, right? They're in our phones, they're in our cars. Uh, you know, people are talking about the metaverse. What do you think power sets going to be high performing chips? Basically, any type of technology these days that is worth anything is going to have a semiconductor chip in there. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I want you guys to follow me to CurzioResearch.com. I write their Monday uh, blog post. And I wrote out my predictions for 2022. And I also did a recap of my predictions for 2021. So you guys can go in there, you can read it, see how I did. But more importantly, what area am I really excited about for 2022 is semiconductors. Now, look, 2021, I bet on semiconductors and it was a very strong space. In fact, I think the SMH was up about 35%. I'm gonna to continue to bet, I'm gonna lean into our winners. I think that 2022 semiconductors are gonna do well. And the first reason is because there has been a lot of big money going into the sector. So a good way to see that is to track the big money signals that are going into SMH. SMH again, that's the Vanek Vectors Semiconductor ETF. They've got 25 uh, semiconductor companies that are in the ETF. But what's so cool about this one-year chart is that it's all buy signals, no sell signals, right? And to make a buy signal, that means the share price has got to go up and volumes have to be increasing. So that price relationship with the volume is indicative of institutions buying the ETF. Now, why would people be buying the ETF? Well, it's because ETFs hold baskets of stocks. SMH in particular holds some great stocks. So let's go ahead and look under the hood for SMH. And you can see, and look, we don't have time to go through the highlight reel of how great these companies are, but NVIDIA is a monster. You look at any multi-year chart, this company has the earnings growth, the revenue growth. It kind of stands on its own. It's like Michael Jordan of the semiconductors. But listen, for the all-star team, Broadcom, great company. They just had great earnings and guidance, big, huge uh, dividend raise. Also, AMD has been doing really well. Big turnaround story the last couple of years. Qualcomm, they had great guidance uh, recently, but the list goes on and on and on. So if you're going to be betting on an ETF, make sure you look under the hood. Don't just go say, hey, there's some momentum here. Actually look under the hood and make sure that the companies are fundamentally strong. And so SMH fits the bill. It's got the momentum that I want, but more importantly, it has the high quality companies that are guiding higher. And so that is one area that I'm going to be excited about for 2022. I own a bunch of semiconductors I have for a number of years. It has been the gift that keeps on giving. So that's my number one area. The number two area, we need to go back to my investing playbook. Let me go ahead and uh, share my screen again. Go back here. And that is, so what is one, so one area, semiconductors have been breaking out. What area has been lagging recently? Well, I can tell you it has been small caps. Okay. So if you go and you look at, you know, the Russell 2000, which is the 2000 smallest companies in the Russell 3000, it underperformed the S&P and all the major indexes. Now, inside of those small caps are some high quality ones. Right, And so I picked IJR as a way to express uh, a bet on small caps with a value tilt, okay? Now this is the iShares Core S&P small cap ETF, IJR. You look at the chart over one year, 
a lot of green earlier in the year. Then they had the one sell signal, but then it came back a lot of green started to pull back a little bit. I really, really like this ETF because it holds a lot of high quality names, right? So OmniCell is one, uh, Kulik and Sofa Industries are another, but listen, why on earth would I be wanting to look at small caps? And I'm going to tell you this because history tells us that when we are in high inflationary environments, small cap value actually tends to outperform in a big way. And so I'm going to share with you another chart. Now, a friend of mine, Alec Young, actually showed this to me. Now, I already knew that I wanted to bet on small caps, but how do you really express that? Well, he shared this really cool chart with me. Now, this is small cap value uh, outperforming in years with high inflation. This goes back to 1927 through 2020, right? And so you can see all these different areas of the market, S&P 500, large cap growth, small cap growth, large cap value, small cap, small cap value. Look at this, small cap value, 12%. So listen, that's all you need to know. You need to know historically, we're facing high inflation. What area is probably going to do really well? Well, I do think that small cap value is going to do really well. And then IJR makes a whole lot of sense because it has that value tilt to small caps. Let's go ahead and actually look at some of the stocks that are in IJR just to kind of get a flavor. It's great companies. You know, you got to look under the hood. So Listen, as we go through here, I saw that Max Linear, so that's a name that's a semiconductor name that I've been long for a number of years. Uh, Kalik is in here. OmniCell is in here. The list goes on and on. And it, it's just, look at this, Celsius Holdings, great company. You know, a lot of these great high-performing names, they are in IJR. And with this high inflationary environment, that is the reason I believe that this ETF could do really well. And since I wrote that piece, IJR has been smoking hot. So have the semiconductor uh, space. So again, these are the areas that I'm focused on. I'm curious to hear what you guys are focused on, but more importantly, have a reason to actually bet on a sector or a group. Use data. It puts you in the driver's seat. I'll see you next time.